Ah, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Um, people, I'm glad to be here back here today. I am busy. I've been really celebrating and we've been playing songs almost every day, celebrating the Passover unleavened bread days and really just kind of chilling out with the Lord and just praying for others and uh, enjoying ourselves pretty much in the Lord. But um, I want to come here. Um, I know I think my husband was talking about the barley, the barley or something. The barley shift, right, babe, yesterday? Was it the barley? Oh, he don't hear me. The barley sheaf offering, yeah, was yesterday. I thought so, because we were talking about it. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's really exciting times, exciting times right now. With all the prophecies fulfilling before our eyes. And today my report's going to be mostly focusing on Africa. I got a lot of voices from Africa today. I'm going to be letting uh, my, my sister from uh, Kenya talk today on her channel, uh, Dr. Mumbai. She's talking about uh, a lot of things going on over there in Africa. No more churches all the shut, shutdown of the churches in Africa. And also, I'm going to be going to um, Jonathan from South Africa. I think he's got a lot to say about what's happening. Uh, so I'm going to let him share some um, comments that I listened to last night on his YouTube channel. And then I'm going to be going to Carrie Geddon. Carrie Geddon has a report that she want to talk about something doing with the UFOs and the spacecrafts uh, coming or something like that. So I'm going to be dealing with these three people mostly today. And then also, really, I forgot to pull him up. I, that was important, too. I got to go and pull him up. Uh, I got to go to um, a message in the end here by, oh, wow, I can't even think here. Father, get my mind together to think here. I'm going to go to Baron Searle. I mean, he has an important message out. So kind of relating to what Jonathan is talking about on his message. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and play these things today to you to you guys. Um, my next report going to be a mission report. And I would do that probably on my next video. There's a lot going on in India, a lot going on in Africa, a lot going on all over the lands. I was getting some videos from uh, Bob Barbara, and it's a lot going on. So I'm going to share a mission report on my next report. But uh, I just want to come and carry these uh, some news from Israel news and some other news. And then I will get into uh, these three people, uh, four people now. I almost forgot about my friend there, Byron Searle. But we're going to be talking about these uh, subject matters today. I will be reading Byron Searle's message and other people will speak for themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I hope you guys enjoying your Monday. Uh, so let me go on over here to Israel News and get the earthquake report. I'm not going to play the earthquake report, but I will show it. I want you to go and look at Dutch Sense report. We have having these quakes just left and right, left and right coming. Quakes everywhere. Yellowstone report coming from my friend Mary Greeley. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But I want to first talk about this one thing been on my mind right now. I did send it out to you guys last night. Some of you guys last night. Wow, people. The U.S. Postal Service could shut down by June. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Uh, I was just thinking. I mean, I saw this last night before I went to bed. And I'm like, well, are you kidding me? You know, if this is one way can, you can shut down the whole world. I'm telling you, when you cut down the postal system where people can't get packages and you can't get mail and you can't mail out mail and you can't receive mail, I mean, that would not be too nice, will it? It would not be too nice, people. But we know that we are in the end, at the end, and this is in the days of judgment. We know that God's people need to repent right now before him. We need to repent for our uh, Congress in Washington and the um, the political systems of our nation. 
uh, uh, just so corrupt today. Uh, so much uh, abortions going on. So many babies still getting killed. We got just nothing but sin, sin, sin. And nobody seemed to be repenting. Nobody came on the TV and say, well, America, we need to repent right now. Bow down before the heavenly God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We haven't done that yet, people. That's why I want you to hear what Jonathan is saying on here today. Jonathan from Africa. But let me go ahead and read just a little bit of this, and I'm going to get going here. Throughout the coronavirus pandemic, postal workers have been on the front lines considered essential workers who must continue to do their jobs as usual while others stay home. But some lawmakers are warning that without more support, the U.S. Postal Service could completely shut down in the next few months, threatening the livelihoods of hundreds of thousands of Americans. Last week, Representatives Carolyn Maloney, the chair of the Committee on On-Site and Reform, and Jerry Colony, chair of the Subcommittee on Government Operations, said in a letter to Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell that the COVID-19 crisis is threatening the future of mail service in the United States. The Postal Service is in need of urgent help as a direct result of the coronavirus crisis, they said. Based on a number of briefings and warnings this week about a critical fall off in mall across the country, mail, I'm sorry, mail across the country, it has become clear that the Postal Service will not survive the summer without immediate help from Congress and the White House. Every community in America relies on the Postal Service to deliver vital goods and services, including life-saving medications. So I'm going to just stay, stay, uh, stop there, and I will put this down uh, in the description box for you guys to come finish looking at it. But I'm telling you, we are in the end, aren't we in the end? We are definitely in the end. They have to see this coming up on a headline. The Postal Service needs America's help, and we must answer this call, they said. So... Oh, wow. And so they're putting it out there, people. They're putting it out there, these Republicans. I don't know. Congress must not ignore the U.S. Postal Service. Mail volume plummeted this week, and USPS will run out of cash. Run out of cash by June. Every household and every business in America relies on our Postal Service. We can and should take swift action, swift action to return it to its sovereignty. Our uh, risk is collapse risk is collapse. So we need to be praying about this issue, this matter. I give it to you guys to pray about. I pray, I'm praying about it myself. Oh my goodness, what would we do? We couldn't have businesses. We couldn't have operations. We couldn't have uh, a postal, a post box where we can send out things to our missionaries and uh, people in the news or people in the ministries and all these things are being affected. So we need to be praying about this matter, okay? Please pray about this matter. I'm going to go on over here now to the Israel news and get back to these other news in a minute here. So bear with me today. I hope you guys can get something out of these reports, this report today. So let me go ahead and mute this out. Uh, let me mute this out and then you guys can go ahead. TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The corona contagion throughout the state of Israel continues to spread seemingly unhindered as the number of newly confirmed cases soared to 8,611 individuals as of 8 o'clock this morning. The leader of the Islamist Hamas organization, Yahya Sinwal, calls on Israel's defense minister, Naftali Bennett, to read the biblical book of Ezekiel, chapter 17, as a glimpse into what the jihadist Palestinian group plans for the Jewish state. The commander of the counterintelligence unit of the Iranian proxy Hezbollah was reportedly assassinated in Lebanon over the weekend, some two weeks after unknown assailants shot dead Antoine Hayek former member of the now disbanded Christian militia of southern Lebanon, which was supported in the past by the Israeli military. The corona contagion throughout the state of Israel continues to spread seemingly unhindered as the number of newly confirmed cases soared to 8,611 individuals as of 8 o'clock this morning, 
as opposed to 7,030 that were confirmed on Friday. The Israeli Health Ministry reported that among those afflicted, 141 individuals are classified as critically ill, 107 of whom are currently connected to ventilators. I'm also sad to report that 15 Israelis succumbed to the disease, raising the total number of victims to 51 individuals. In contrast, the number of Israelis healed over the weekend almost doubled since Friday, with release data confirming this morning 585 healed Israelis in total. Meanwhile, the Israeli Health Ministry urged the interim government in Jerusalem to impose additional restrictions on movement for several towns and cities where the plague is raging uncontrollably, including the predominantly ultra-Orthodox cities of Beitar Elit, Elad and Bet Shemesh, as well as Siberia's Ashkelon and Migdala Emek. The ministry also included a request for general lockdown on a number of areas in Jerusalem, among others the predominantly ultra-Orthodox neighborhoods of Mea Sha'arim, Ramot and Harnof, as well as Givat Mordechai. It is important to mention that in contrast to the general lockdown on the city of Bnei Brak, people would be permitted to enter and exit the proposed communities for jobs that are classified by the government as vital. And while the Special Ministerial Committee to Combat the Spreading Coronavirus, which is chaired by incumbent Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, deliberates additional measures, Israeli enforcement authorities are making every effort to assure the public's complete adherence to the restrictive previously adopted measures. Police set up hundreds of roadblocks throughout the country, including on Israel's main artery between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, Highway No. 1, which triggered significant traffic jams in which drivers, some of them doctors on the way to hospitals in the Israeli capital, found themselves stuck in traffic for over three hours' time. Among others, the Israel Police Spokespersons Unit informed TV7 that some 12,936 fines were given to civilians that were found in breach of the government's restrictive measures. <laughs> During the operation, Israel's intelligence agency provided information to the police about a confirmed coronavirus carrier who bluntly used public transportation earmarked for soldiers to travel to Jerusalem. In light of the suspect's negligent behavior, which is just one case out of many across the state, the police were forced to inform all of the bus's passengers that they are required to immediately enter quarantine for a duration of two weeks. In addition to the roadblocks, police forces raided several synagogues in Jerusalem and Modin Elite, where dozens of individuals of the ultra-Orthodox community held illegal gatherings. Police spokespersons Miki Rosenfeld told TV7 that the people that had gathered illegally were given fines and were dispersed to their homes. In other yet related news, the Israeli Defense Ministry in cooperation with the Foreign Ministry, Israel's National El Al Airline and the Israeli Chemicals Corporate, or ICL, are in the process of transferring millions of items of essential equipment from China to Israel. In a statement by the Ministry of Defense Spokespersons Unit, it revealed that an airlift consisting of 11 aircraft are in the process of transporting the essential cargo, which includes masks, protective gear, ventilators and more. The Defense Ministry statement further noted that upon the completion of preparations over a period of two weeks, including procurement agreements, diplomatic efforts and logistical arrangements, an airlift of essential medical equipment is taking off from China and will be on its way to Israel. It further underlined that the vital equipment is earmarked for medical teams across the Jewish states. Turning now to the Gaza Strip, where the leader of the Islamist Hamas organization, Yahya Sinwar, called on Israel's defense minister, Naftali Bennett, to read the biblical book of Ezekiel as a glimpse into what the jihadist Palestinian group plans for the Jewish state. In response to a statement made last week by Minister Bennett in which he insisted that humanitarian concerns over Gaza must also be applied to Israel, namely the recovery of two fallen IDF soldiers that are currently in the custody of Hamas, the Islamist group's leader declared that if residents of Gaza start dying as a result of not having enough ventilators, 
Hamas will make 6 million Israelis unable to breathe. In an interview with Hamas-controlled El Aqsa broadcast, the Islamist leader Yahya Sinwar leveled a threat to Israel's top defense officials, saying, Bennett, I refer to you the book of Ezekiel, chapter 17, to read what awaits you and what awaits your filthy Zionist entity. In that same interview, Sinwar also made a pledge to the Muslim-regarded prophet Muhammad that while the whole world is hit by this coronavirus, the members of the Al-Qassam brigades, the armed wing of Hamas, are working day and night to complete their preparation for what he termed as liberation of what they regard to be the Islamic lands of Palestine. وانا بدي استغل الفرصه هذه لوجه كلمتين لبنت وزير الدفاع الصهيوني انا احيي لك لان ترجع الى سفر يحزكيل الاصحاح السابع عشر لتقرا ما ينتظرك وما ينتظر كيانك لا سمح الله وان شاء الله ما بنصل للحظه هذه انه ننظر الى مواطنينا وهم تخرج أرواحهم ولا يجوز أجهزة التنفس أنا بقول لبنت أننا سنجعل ستة مليون مستوطن إسرائيلي نقطع عنهم النفس لا تقلقيها من محمد على مقاومة غزة العالم يضرب بالكورونا وشباب القسام يعملون ليل نهار لاستكمال عدة التحرير The Office of Defense Minister Naftali Bennett was not immediately available for comment Turning now to Israel's northern neighbor, Lebanon, where the commander of the counterintelligence unit of the Iranian proxy Hezbollah was reportedly assassinated over the weekend, some two weeks after unknown assailants shot dead Antoine Hayek, a former member of the now disbanded Christian militia of southern Lebanon, which was back then supported by the Israeli military. The murder of the former militant took place in the Christian village of Maye Maye, Arabic for water, water. Nevertheless, no claim of responsibility was made by any of the anti-Christian groups in Lebanon. Turning back to the assassination of Hezbollah's counterintelligence commander, Ali Muhammad Yunis, the Lebanese-Iranian proxy released a statement in which it confirmed that his death was connected to his work. And while no immediate claims of responsibility were made, according to several reports, information provided by Hezbollah suggests that the assassination of Yunis was carried out by the Israeli Mossad and its agents. Nevertheless, TV7 was not able to verify Israel's alleged responsibility. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. And I'd like to take this opportunity once again to thank all of our partners as your financial support as well as your prayers are the reason TV7 Israel News is made possible. And I'd like to continue to encourage you to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem by praying for the peace of Jerusalem, the peace and salvation of Israel, as well as for all those who are impacted by this coronavirus around the world. I'm Jonathan Hassan. Have a Erev Tov and Shavua Tov. We will see you again tomorrow at the same time. Seven. We've got a lot of strange things happening right now around the globe, not just in this country, but if you take a step back and you look at what's happening, it's obvious to see that the leadership here around the world seems to be in bed together, pushing a global ideology where every single country is coming up making the same moves, and they're doing things that don't make sense in terms of trying to stop a so-called outbreak of something. This is not to say there's not something going on. We know people are getting ill. We know that they're using this globally to clamp down. I've warned about it. The biggest thing is the lockdown and the stripping of freedoms. Do not get caught arguing over the small stuff. Because the bigger picture is what is important to see. When they come through and they tell you, Social distancing is needed, and they put tape on the floor, and everyone's staying six foot apart. They're implementing their plan. But when they come in and they say, all right, we're going to take it a step further. We're going to let you see everything down this aisle, but you can't buy it. That's right. We're going to let you in the store where you can still cough and spread your germs or whatever else, but we're not going to let you go down select aisles to buy 
non-essential goods. And in some states, those non-essential goods are seeds, are clothes. This is more than stopping an outbreak. I know most of you are starting to see it. It's here. This is what we call big beta, and you better hope it's a beta run, because if it's the one, well, you got a lot of things to get done rather quickly. And if Bill Gates and his buddies have it their way before your life ever gets back on track, they expect everyone to have a certificate. That you have the antibodies or you've been vaccinated before you can get back to normal life as you ever knew it before. There's so much connected to this. But when they break down everyday parts of life and they stop you from doing the essential things like surviving, putting clothing on your back and growing food in your own garden, there's problems. If you can't see it, you need to look deep within. I'm going to break this down further. The gloves come off over here. D-Live. Join us Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, The magnitude, well, like 3.6, 3.9 are registering and shaking up the caldera here. The cases of coronavirus there in um, Idaho have surpassed the numbers there that they have in Oregon. Evidently, they're still allowing church services, and even though um, it's mandated for everyone to stay at home, um, Tim Remington, who's a legislator there, who's also a pastor, um, continues to hold church services. Uh, yeah, and people need to stay at home. All it takes is one person who's asymptomatic, not showing any symptoms of the virus, to spread it to others. And because of the smaller areas, not having the uh, software or whatever it is they need to do testing, uh, many places, uh, many people are waiting 10, 14 days to find out if they do have the coronavirus. Yeah, it's not the seasonal flu. You know, when you got people that are dying, children, um, young adults, and especially those with com- compromised immune systems dying from this virus, you need to do what you can to save their lives and not spread the virus. So here we have the borehole for Yellowstone Lake. Like I said, Yellowstone Lake's been showing a lot of activity. And this is an earthquake right here that occurred in Idaho. Let me show you the signature as it came in. This here was a magnitude 3.8. They're not l- labeling um, Calus, Idaho, or Chalice, Idaho, excuse me. Uh, let me show you the felt reports. We got 223 people that felt this 3.8. It was reported near Caldwell. And over here, let's see, up there in the Smoky Mountain Sawtooth, Sawtooth National Forest. And... Uh, it doesn't show. Bedrock Flat, Dutch Flat, North Crane Creek. And all the way over here to Yankee Fork, Mill Creek, Round Valley. There we go. Yeah, Chalice, Idaho. And it shook for a while. You can see that uh, right here. These are uh, minute marks, and then we got another one that occurred there at 1411. That was a magnitude 3.6, and we got the moment tensor ball, which is different than this 3.8. Let me go back to this. Uh, there we go. Got the P wave that came in initially from the um, west. Tension was applied going up, whereas this moment tensor ball. Tension was applied going west. The initial first wave that you hear of the earthquake came from the south. So this is an indication. This fault line has a lot of stress still built up. I'll try and make this bigger for you. 
you can see it's following along the sawtooth fault line. Yeah, and then on the uh, 31st, that was the magnitude 6.5 that occurred. Today is April 6, uh, 2020. I want to throw that in there. People always wonder, what date was the, the report that you did? Now, I had reported before that magnitude 6.5 how there was uplift across the park prior to that and that the Snake River Plateau was showing the intrusion of the magma. There's two places where the magma comes in there um, to the caldera of Yellowstone. One's from the Snake River Plateau, and the other one comes in from the uh, south, from the Gulf of Mexico. Hello and welcome, fam, to another episode of a prophetic update on the Dr. Mumbi Show. My name is Dr. Mumbi Saraki. How are you doing? How's everything going? I really do pray you're well in all your ways and that you are um, moving into a totally new chapter. You have no choice. <laughs> the world as we know it is gone, fam. It will never, ever be the same again. The things you used to do are gone. I mean, look at it, like the education system in some schools has been cut till the end of, you know, the summer. And they're saying that education now, they're going to do, be doing more of these online learnings and et cetera, et cetera. So the show, social fabric is gone. The matrix has been completely shut down as they get ready to usher in the new world order. And, you know, we must remember the pillars of the new world order are one world government, one world religion, one world currency, money system, you know, um, uh, you know, one world police state, et cetera, et cetera. And, we, and we're going to see that being ushered in more and more because I told you this is the year of the opening. And of course, there are many that want to try and close that opening down, but it's not going to happen. And one of the things that people really need to be aware of is that we are witnessing the total destruction of corporate worship, the total destruction of corporate, corporate you know, um, gatherings. And over the last week or so, we've seen across the African continent, uh, well, especially in East Africa. Let me, actually, even I saw someone in Ghana where, you know, people who had um, tried to attend church were beaten, were literally being beaten by police with, like, sticks and stuff, madness. Um, the churches were shut down, which shows you if a church was truly opening, you know, operating in some kind of real power, could they really just shut you down like that? Obviously not. And we're going to see, like, for it's going to take a while for things like these social gatherings, like churches to open up again, at least a month or two. And some countries, it will be indefinitely. But what they've done is they've totally shattered the church. They've totally shattered religion. And they've totally decimated, you know, this corporate worship. And what has happened on a vibrational level, what this means is that, you know, Every country, regardless of how, um, you know, corrupt or imperfect a lot of these church organizations were, every country kind of, um, you know, had this shield, this spiritual shield, because whenever the saints would gather to worship, whenever they'd gather to sing their praise songs, it would create a certain vibration over that nation, you know, that acted as a spiritual buffer. Um, sometimes, you know, it's a buffer to let in good or buffer to keep away the bad or sometimes buffer to let in bad stories for other days but it, it definitely kept people in a certain level vibrationally where there were genuine saints who were genuinely seeking their salvation and that genuine and innocent vibe would kind of be there because I mean so, somewhere like Kenya I think we have a thousand if not 10,000 churches so imagine all of that is shut down which means that vibration has totally been just shut down and totally you know oppressed, which means that the gates of many nations, which were relying on these Christian churches and where these Christian churches were the ones who were responsible for doing a lot of the praying and fasting for the nation to make sure that, you know, the president stayed in line and, um, you know, certain diseases didn't hit the country and, you know, all these things. They were kind of the gatekeepers of their nations, but now those gatekeepers have been stopped from worshiping. And I've told you, you know, we are each like a vibrational being and where two or more gathered, 
you know, the most high is there and there is a powerful um, spiritual energy and power that is there when we collectively gather and pray and praise and worship together. But now that is gone. And this means that also those people who used to just wait till Sunday, you wake up, you dress up, you go to church, you pray, bruh, and you forget it for the rest of the week. That kind of, of spiritual life is also totally decimated. And you must now ask yourself, what kind of relationship do you want with the Most High? Because most likely, your church isn't going to be accessible for at least the next month, two or three what are you going to do in terms of your, you know, for your own home church life? Do you have an altar in your home? Do you read this, you know, whatever? Do you worship wh whoever, you know, whatever deity you worship, the most high creator? Do you have an intimate relationship with him? Are you teaching your children or the same, you know? Do you have daily practices, whether you pray, whether you meditate? Because you, now the church is in your home. The church is no longer in these buildings, and it's going to be very interesting to see how a lot of um, these ministers and church people actually try what they do with these buildings. Because I've seen mightiest prophet of God and, you know, the, the CO1 and the select of God, but your church was closed down. So what kind of mightiest prophet are you? You don't even see this coming for yourself, you know? These are the kind of questions that will be asked, and I think for now... If the church, if you have any real power with you and your congregation, this is the time to pray that Africa sets itself apart from Europe and the world because they're getting ready to collapse a global matrix. A lot of these presidents that you haven't spoken out against are puppets of the West, which means that now they are literally going to be like regional managers. You know what I mean? They, they, their agenda has been fulfilled. They're, they're going to copy paste whatever their puppet master does. Their puppet master closes the churches they go ahead and close the churches in your nation. So this is really, if there was ever a time for you to really pray, because your life is gone. That, that, that prosperity thing, that emotional and intellectual, like fake food, milk that you were feeding your congregation, that is gone. That is null and, and void. I was going to say and freaking void, but that is, that is no more. And I pray that you have prepared the people that came to you and sought your knowledge. I pray that you have prepared them for this, the battle ahead because the, the, the church is gone and it is time now for the remnants to rise. If you are not operating in any power, you will not survive. If you're not operating in real power, you will not survive in the times ahead. Your church will be shut down. And so this is a really powerful time to, for a lot of these prosperity churches to realize the financial system is gone. The money system is gone. Those things you wanted money for are gone. I mean, now, you know, if you have a little bit more money, you may be able to shield yourself and, and protect yourself. But we're all going to be, you know, they're sucking all of us into this new world order system. But those people who used to bring money to you every Sunday, they're gone. Now they're going to be coming every Sunday for you to help them because many of them have lost their jobs. Many of them are getting laid off. And they, they, it's not business. That life is gone. And so for all these pastors and preachers and, you know, uh, it's time for them to really, really usher in a new day for Africa because your life as you know it is done unless you can now pray into existence, use your power to help create an alternative life for Africa, wherever you are, whatever nation you are, whatever community you're in, to use that power and use your congregation. Don't just go online and think now you'll just be operating online and things will go, you know, those things will continue because they are going to collapse churches. They're going to start doing more, you know, they're going to start creating more and more rules. You can, now you can't meet because of coronavirus. You know what I mean? You, you, your congregants will get infected. Next thing they'll say, you can't do this. You know, you can't preach this. You can't preach that. Um, you know, you have to have an open doctrine where everyone is accepted. This is where we're going. And eventually, all these individual evangelists and, and, and prophets, your churches are going to be collapsed for the new world order religion, the one world religion. That's where we're going. And so you have a small window of opportunity to use your spiritual clout, to use the spiritual energy of your congregants to create an alter alternate reality. And that's where the churches should be of Africa because that, that Christian system, that white Jesus system, they're collapsing it. And they're getting ready to usher in the false prophet. They're getting, you know, the false messiah, so says Arboji, whatever you want to call him. And for us...
now we must really start to look for the real power, you know? And I'm not saying demonic power or anything. Righteousness is key. But what many will find that the spiritual teachers that they relied on didn't prepare them for this, didn't even warn them about this. And they are totally unaware. So if you are sitting at home thinking, oh, in, our, in, in Easter I'll be back in church and life will just continue, that life is gone, fam. Gone. And it really is time for the remnant to rise. It's really time for you to be walking and operating in power. Anyway, let me know what you think, fam. Let me know if there's any ways, you know, any advice that you would give people who, like, they don't have church anymore. What should they be doing if they're just coming out of church now by force? Uh, let us know what you think. Until next time, sending you much love, much favor, much blessing, much grace. Remember, as much as the world is ending, a very new world is being born that is absolutely glorious, but we must seize it and bring it down into our reality. The last days. People don't understand. Um, the world will never end. It's the end of an age. The power structure is moving towards the Bantu people. That's what is happening right now. There's a shift. There's a shift. That's why you see me. I'm getting bolder and bolder and bolder. Hallelujah. There's a shift. There's a shift, my brothers and sisters. If the Pope can say that, and if a, a top Christian leader can say that, brothers and sisters, these are the times. I'm telling you right now, your churches are shut down. There's a lot of people who are doing research. You want to tell me that the pastors are going to preach the same messages again. No, they're not going to preach all these messages because the people are getting smarter. Knowledge is increasing, my brothers and sisters. If you're a pastor today, you've got to research. You have to research. You have to research and tell the truth. You have to research because the times have changed. I am telling the truth. You won't be able to lie to your members anymore. No. And some of these pastors, they're so good at lying. They've mastered the art of lying. They have, that's why I don't go to church. Like, look, look at this liar here. And, you, and the pastor knows what he's preaching is a lie. And they know it. But you don't have a heart. You don't have a heart. How can you lie? And you lie and you, and you sleep with a, a, a... Man, you're a warlock. You're a witch. Anybody who lies with a straight conscience. No. You're, these pastors... Hallelujah. And what is the sign right now? In America, many pastors are dying. The black pastors, look. They're dying. And we had one uh, Hebrew Israelite, uh, the guy who calls himself uh, the, the comforter. Brothers and sisters, be wise in this time. Be wise. Be wise in this time. This is the beginning of judgment. The world will never be the same again. I am telling you the truth. But a lot of people are not ready because people are, oh, what about my marriage? What about my husband? I need to get married. My degree, my this, all these things. Brothers and sisters, all these things in life are not so important. I'm not against all these things. The most important thing is your soul. What good is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul? We put a lot of faith in things that are immaterial. Today we see America struggling to get beds in hospital. A nurse said America is worse than a third world country. The things that Africa has been experiencing, America and Europe is not experiencing. You don't even need to be a prophet to, to see what is happening. You don't even need to be a prophet. You don't even need to pray to see what is happening. It is so clear. What are you praying for? Oh, yeah, open my eyes. The most high is, man, you know, come on. Because do you know what the, the problem is? Too much Christian left behind series. People believed the end times was going was gonna to be fantasy like the way they were taught. It won't be the way that you were taught. 
we in the last days, the biggest sign is the awakening of the chosen people. That is the big, not the earthquakes. No, the biggest sign are the Bantu people awakening. That is the biggest sign of the end times. I'm telling you, all these things are secondary. The biggest sign is the awakening of our people. And the white people are fighting. I can see even in America. You know why? Christianity is coming to an end. And this is what is keeping white people in power. It's white Jesus and Christianity. It's coming to an end. That is why they support Trump. But they don't know that Trump is going to play them. Trump's going to play them. Trump is going to play them. The Christians are so deceived because Donald Trump is fighting for their values. Man, you must be smart in life. So a lot of Christians to, uh, today right now are supporting Trump because he's, he's fighting for their values. Once he gets what he wants, he was going to play you. He's been doing it all the time. Look at Trump's history. Once he gets what he wants, boom. The Christians are struggling. What a, Christianity is, is crumbling before their eyes because it's based on lies. Christianity is based on lies. I believe in Christ, not Christianity. It's based on lies. Brothers and sisters, if Rome could come out and confess, Rome, if Rome comes out and confesses, they're afraid. If the Pope today confesses, if the Pope today comes out and confesses everything they, they, they know, they have our artifacts there, they have our African artifacts there, our Bantu art, they know many, many things. Those, those Jesuits, oh, they know many things. But they give us a watered version of the Bible. But even in this watered version, we can still find the truth because uh, Yesaya, Yesaya Congo told us, I'll leave you my spirit. I won't leave you a book. He never said, I'll, um, I'll leave you a book. I'll leave you my spirit. Hallelujah. I'll leave you my spirit. That is why sometimes you, you can read the Bible. You're like, mm -mm. there's something more missing. What? You know, you pray, you fast, and the Most High opens your eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what is happening right now. And we have on the scene today prophets like Nabid Siba Malonga. Hallelujah. Pastor Melo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who are, who are doing an amazing job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I can see even in America they're getting it. Hallelujah. Because in America what was taught was Yiddish. You know, it's um, I stand here in pain sometimes. Like uh, you, you can even ask Brother Masia. Is I have such a I have such a heart for America that at times I would even compromise what I know just 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 to bring peace. You know, I'm like, will they listen? Ever since Mama Nicole did her first video of Bantu languages, I said, Ah, bro, there's hope. Hallelujah. And today I see a lot of Afro-Americans interested in Bantu languages. In Bantu languages. Hallelujah. Which is, that is, that is the Palel Hebrew. You know, but many of them can't make the, the, the transition. You know why? Because they're going to have to restart their preaching. So what? It's okay. You can say, guys, we were wrong. I acknowledge. It's okay. You know, when I listen to Pastor Melo, hallelujah, when I listen to Nabiti Malonga or, or any others, sometimes I say, hey, I have to, I have to reread my Bible. That is greatness. That is greatness, my brothers and sisters. We don't know everything. And you, you must admit and say, I was wrong. Yes, I was wrong. I didn't know. But today, nobody can say that. Oh, I, I knew. I knew. I knew. Oh, I mean, no, but I am... Uh, I, uh, I am, the, I am the prophet of the end times. I knew. Brothers and sisters, even the Apostle Paul. Let's read it. Um, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. The Apostle Paul himself. Paul divides people. <laughs> but check this. 1 Corinthians 13. Verse 9, for we, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. We know in part, 
and we prophesy in part. Hallelujah. We know in part and we prophesy in part. Hallelujah. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. We know in part. But now in these end times, the most has raised people. Hallelujah. To who can bring knowledge. Why? Because knowledge is increasing. We're living in a time where knowledge is increasing. Knowledge is increasing. Knowledge is increasing. That is why things are moving rapidly. Knowledge shall increase in these last days. And I celebrate all giftings. Hallelujah. But when it comes to language, you have a man who knows, oh, I don't get it. Zombie is a zombie. Zombie is a zombie. Zombie is a zombie. Ay, 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 ay. With that attitude. <coughs> Excuse me. You'll never go far. Hallelujah. And I said, um, I'll do a video. If anybody knows Minister Farrakhan and can have contacts to Minister Farrakhan, please put them in contact with Pastor Melo. Hallelujah. It's urgent. Hallelujah. It's urgent. We are praying that the meeting with Pastor Melo and Farrakhan will take place. Please pray about it. And those of you who are fasting, let's fast about it. Let's pray that Pastor Melo will meet Minister Farrakhan. Hallelujah. Let's pray that Pastor Melo will meet Minister Farrakhan. That's our prayer topic, okay? Let's pray that Pastor Melo will meet Minister Farrakhan. Hallelujah, okay? Let's pray that Pastor Melo will meet Minister. Put it as your prayer request. Fast about it. Let's pray that Pastor Melo will meet Minister Farrakhan. That's going to be a, such a bomb in America. Hallelujah. 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 Don't judge Farrakhan. This. No, 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 no. Look, love your people. It's like when I was talking about uh, Kanye West. I'm not a Kanye West fan. But when I saw Kanye West saying certain truths, I looked at the bigger image. I don't look at Joel Osteen. You know what? I love our people so much. I said, you know what? Tatan Zambi, even a little truth, bring Kanye West. I don't know. Now people tell me uh, Kanye West is a clone. Kanye, it's not really him. I don't know. But when I just saw Kanye West doing that, I'm like, it's time. That's how I think. When I see a little spark, let's pray. That's how I believe. That's how I believe. Hallelujah. Now they tell me Kanye West is a clone or something. I don't know. I'm not in America. I've never really researched on cloning, so I don't know. Okay? So I don't know. Someone told me no, uh, Kanye West is a clone. I don't know. Okay? Okay? But there's one thing Kanye West says, and I'll never, ever forget. Kanye West said that black people are slaves by choice. It's a hard pill to swallow, but it's the truth. We are slaves by choice. It's a hard pill to swallow, but it's the truth. We are slaves because we want to be slaves. It's the truth. In Africa, we are slaves because we want to be slaves. In America, it's true. You know why? And this is a message where the Hebrew Israelites taught wrong. They've preached so much on the curses. They've, they've made you into victims. But the Spirit would tell me, when you speak to the people in America, tell them they are kings. Hallelujah. They are kings. They are priests. They are gods. They are my chosen people. That, that has been my message. Your identity. But you've been taught so long to be a beggar. You've been taught, you, we are cursed, we are cursed, we are cursed, we are cursed. This is the work of the Hebrew Israelite doctrine. They teach you the curses, but they don't teach you the solution. I teach both. I can come here. I'm from Congo. We can teach you about the curses. Trust me, if there's any people who have lived the curses until today are the Congolese people. The South Africans, the Mozambicans, the, 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 the Angolans, parts of N Nigeria. Hallelujah. We, we are living the curses. You know? But I said, you know what? I'm going to preach the solution. Because when there's darkness, if a room is dark, okay? S say, for example, you, you walk in a dark room, okay? And there are people around you. And you say, oh, wow, it's so dark here. Look, there's a snake here. Be, oh, be, be afraid of the snake. There's a rat. Oh, there's a rat here. Be afraid of the rat. Be, I'm not helping you. But what do I do? If it's dark, I switch on the light. And when you switch on the light, the snake will run away. 
the, the rest will run away. What am I trying to say? Is we in darkness. And people all know black people are, are cursed. We are just cursed. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. We pronounce the curse. We, instead of switching on the light. Oh, you know, that's the problem. I preach a message of hope. Hallelujah. We've suffered for too long. Our people have suffered for too long. I preach a message of hope, my brothers and sisters, to get our people. Once you know who you are, you repent with understanding. Hallelujah. So let's pray and fast that Pastor Melo will meet Farrakhan. Please. It's urgent. I remember I did a video earlier this year about the year of return. Before the whole corona, coronavirus thing. But I woke up with an urgency in my spirit. Like this morning, I'm waking up with an urgency in my spirit. I said, you know what? I'm going to just do the video and whatever I'll say, I'll say. Yeah, speak through me. Okay? All praises, my brothers. It's time. Let's pray and fast that Pastor Melo meets uh, Minister Farrakhan. Yeah, now, I've put a link on my video. It's uh, when Pastor Chris came out. There's a pastor called Matthew Ashimolo who came out. And see how he's, he's even emotional. Pastor Chris is telling the truth. And, and we get this, this guy, Matthew Ashimolo, who's, I don't, I don't, um, I don't get it. Okay? Watch the video. It's in my inbox. Sorry, it's in my description box. And we can discuss it. Hi guys, this is your sister Karen Gidden in Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, I want to share this vision, very, very powerful vision. I had it in March, uh, the back end of March. I forgot the date. Uh, I forgot to write the date down, but I had it in March uh, 20, 2020. Very, very powerful vision. In this vision, brothers and sisters, I was coming down a particular road. Uh, from where I'm living from my house and as I was coming down <clears throat> sorry as I was coming down the road brothers and sisters I managed to just look up in the sky and it was night time brothers and sisters I saw two moons one full moon and one crescent moon okay so one was a full moon and one was a crescent and the color of these moon got me because they were like silvery, you know, sort of like this background sort of thing. Not, not this bright, okay, but uh, it was a little bit silvery <clears throat> in color, brothers and sisters. And I was admiring the moon. And they were standing uh, side by side, like a massive gap was between them, but you know, they were standing side by side. And as I was admiring this phenom phenomenon, because that's what it is, because I've met, you know, to see a full moon and then a crescent moon beside it, brothers and sisters, you know, it takes your breath away. And I was like in awe, I was looking up in the sky. And the Holy Spirit was saying to me, this is a sign. This is a sign. That's all I kept hearing in my spirit. This is a sign. This is a sign. Brothers and sisters, as I was there looking at these two moons, remember they were side and side, but a little bit apart. Straight away, straight away from the distance, I saw an object and it was getting closer and closer and closer and closer till it was in my view and this object brothers and sisters uh pass between pass between the, the two moons and as i just watched it watch it just pass like it passed over my head and and just went away like i don't know like it went it just disappeared as it was going Brothers and sisters, what I saw, what the Most High showed me was what is to be coming on the, what is to be coming, I don't know, what's going to come on the scene is a UFO craft. If I was an artist, I would draw it for you, brothers and sisters, because it's still vivid as I'm talking to you, the colors, the shape, 
how it looks, everything is so vivid. Brothers and sisters, this thing, let me try to explain it to you as best as I can because it was so demonic, it really was. As I saw this thing, brothers and sisters, because it became so close, the Holy Spirit brought it up so close to me. It had the shape of, it wasn't exactly a triangle because it didn't have a point, so to speak. Like the, the top of it was, I would say the top of it was flat, a little bit flat, not, not altogether flat, but a little bit flat. But then the sides kind of flare, flare out, if you know what I mean. So it looks like a triangle. It's not really a triangle, but that's how it looks because the sides of it were flaring out. So like a flat top and the sides of it were flaring out. <clears throat> and then the corners, the main corners of this uh, UFO craft, it had wheels. So basically around it all together, I counted four wheels. Four wheels, brothers and sisters, this thing was coming in, coming through, coming, coming with four wheels. And then... The color of it was as if it was metallic black, you know? So just Google the color metallic black. You'll see the color I'm talking, a little bit shiny, you know? Um, yeah, that type of color, it was a metallic black in color. And then, this thing is so vivid as I'm talking to you, brothers and sisters. And then, like there was a how could i put it around it not not at the bottom where the wheels are okay but in the middle in the middle was a light like there were windows you know they were like in the middle of this craft uh there was like windows big massive windows but the light was dimmed the light was dim brothers and sisters and I knew that these are fallen angels that's in this thing. I knew it in my spirit. Holy Spirit confirmed everything. These are fallen angels craft. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, when these things come, when the, when the fallen angels are kicked or officially, yes, I know they're around. I know they're walking amongst us and all of that. I, I know that. But there's a part in Revelation 12. Where, where the Bible says that Satan uses tail to draw one third of the angels and flung them to the earth. Amen. So he flung them. So once these wicked beings have been thrown down officially to the earth, they cannot, they cannot uh, go into time. If you know what I mean, I can't, I can't explain it as the Holy Spirit is telling me. I'm telling you this as the Holy Spirit is, is telling me, okay? They cannot like go back into time. So they're going to need, need things to travel around with. They're going to need something quick. Because this craft disappeared. I don't know how it disappeared. As I was watching it come through the two moons. Comes through the two moons and they were coming. And I heard the Holy Spirit said this, you know, this is the uh, UFO fallen angel craft so they're gonna need something to travel to travel on not only that but they're gonna use it to trick many many people and many many people are going to be tricked with these fallen angels with this aircraft sorry my curtains they're going to be tricked so it is coming unfortunately i would like to say that ufos are not real i would like to say you know no little no fallen ones will be, will be flying in these things, but they will. They will, brothers and sisters. You're going to see UFO craft. You're going to see, they call them spaceship. Let's call them spaceship because it's just easy for everybody. So you're going to see spaceships. It's going to be very frightening. It's going to be frightening for some people. Some people are going to be like, oh, whoa, what's this? It's going to be excited for some people. But we, as of most high children, we know exactly what's going on. This is why you have to get into biblical prophecies. <coughs> Sorry. And know exactly, brothers and sisters, what's going on. Time is so short. So I just wanted to come and release this vision. There's two parts to the vision, really, because... After the, 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 the craft disappeared, after the spaceship just went and just disappeared, it's like I saw a plane 
okay? I then saw a plane over the Atlantic Ocean. This was the same place in the vision. This was the same vision. It's like it just shifted and I was standing on the sea and I was wondering where am I? Which sea is this? And the Holy Spirit said Atlantic Ocean, you know, over this massive Atlantic Ocean. Brothers and sisters, I saw a plane. I saw a plane going down into the water, basically crashing. It tried to, I don't know when the plane was coming down, it tried to uh, crash into the water slowly, but it didn't work, brothers and sisters. The plane sunk. And when I was seeing, as I was looking at this plane going down into the water, I heard the Holy Spirit says, COVID, man-made pestilence. So whether or not we pray that the Most High have mercies, you know, we pray, but whether or not sickness is going to take one of the pilots up there, you know, while they're bringing the people home, I don't, I don't know. But I know that the, the plane crash is to do with COVID, some sickness that was going on in the plane uh, with the pilots, brothers and sisters, or very, very plain to me. So that just came straight after I saw the, 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 the spaceship. So there's a lot of things to be unfold, but brothers and sisters, we're in the end. It's no point burying our heads into the sand and saying, la, la, la. You know, because these things will come. These things has to happen before the Most High comes back. We know it's coming back. And we rejoice. With joy, we welcome His returning. Hallelujah. It may be morning. It may be night or noon. But we know that the Lord is coming soon. So rest assured, okay? Lift up your spirit. Don't, get, don't be dismayed. I'm getting all these prophecies, brothers and sisters, you know, and I'm sharing it with you. So it's like I'm having them firsthand and it's, it's heavy. It's, he it's heavy when you know what's going to come and what is to happen. It's very, very heavy. But the most high is in control. We continue to read Psalms 91 as our protection Psalms. And again, when you see these spacecraft, when you see this spaceship, do not enter them. Don't care what nobody says. Some people are using Ezekiel. I think it's Ezekiel. Ezekiel 39. Don't quote me. But it's some part in Ezekiel where they, I think Ezekiel was describing some, some form of aircraft. Okay, and some people say, you know, the Mosai is coming back on that to get his people. Brothers and sisters, know your Bible. That's all I'm going to say to you. Know your Bible. The Bible Okay, people, I'm going to go ahead and read Byron Searle. Time is really going here. Um, this is the message that came on April 5th, yesterday. And I'm going to read it to you now. So he says here, um, and all the material that I'm showing here, I didn't go over the earthquake report, but I will put it in the description box coming from Dutch Sense, okay? Uh, but I want you guys to know that all these quakes, are, it's just so many things going on, you can't hardly keep up with them. But let me go on back to uh, Byron Searle here. But uh, we need to just be really praying, like she just said, Psalm 91, keeping the blood over your doorposts and really uh, making sure that your sins won't find you out, keeping your sins before Messiah every night. So let me go ahead and read this. Virus remedy, virus remedy. Vision and word received on 326 2020, April 5th, 2020. He put it out. 
Second uh, Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Tonight, 3-26-2020, I felt a heavy burden for God's people while in prayer and was earnestly seeking the Lord. He then showed me a vision of what it will take to deliver the people from the, corona, from the coronavirus, and this is what I saw. As the vision began, I saw the president call for a National Day of Repentance. He was appearing on television and declared that at a set Pacific time, everybody in America was to imitate him and follow along with him. Then it changed to a later scene, and the next thing I saw was that all of the television cameras had been set to that specific time, that specified time. And at that precise moment, the president walked out in front of them. He looked at the camera and said, follow me. Then on the camera, he proceeded to get down on his knees and then raise his hands and face towards heaven. He then asked all the people within the sound of his voice to repeat a prayer after him. The president then said these words, Dear God in heaven, with a heavy heart, we ask you to forgive us, the American people, for sinning against you and your word. We humble ourselves to you and ask that you relent us of this awful plague. We repent of all sin from the taking of life to the worship of strange idols. Please forgive us, I ask in your name, amen. The television cameras then panned the entire room and everyone was on their knees. Cameras that was placed everywhere in cities around the country saw all the people with the president on their knees crying out to the Lord God. Then the vision ended. Note, I was not shown who the president was. Do not assume it's the current president. Okay, let me go ahead. After the vision ended, I was in shock of what I had just seen. And I asked the Lord, will this happen? The Lord said, my son, this nation will do this one day, but not now. For my people who are called by my name will not humble themselves. They think this pestilence is but a joke, a government conspiracy, nothing to be taken seriously. But I say I will bring more judgment down on this prideful and stiff-necked people. My people think being locked up in the house is bad, but soon they will have to tape and cover every window to keep out what is coming. The Lord has shown me in previous visions that this will be necessary to do when nuclear radiation fallout occurs from the nuclear bombs that would go off in American cities. It was not made known to me that this is what he was referring to here above, but it is just one of the things he has shown me. I have said this is just the beginning, and it will get much worse. The shortages in the stores are nothing right now. Soon there will be no food. What will you do then, my people? Remember in the days of Jeremiah, people were so hungry that they bore and ate their own children. Those were my people who refused to repent. My son, continue to reach the loss while you can. I will soon remove the electronics that everybody worships. I will bring this nation to its knees in repentance. Those who refuse to humble themselves will perish or will turn to the son of perdition for salvation. I say again, repent, turn from your wicked ways, and I will hear and heal your land. Read my word every day, learn of me, and follow my ways. I love you and want no one. I want no child to perish. I want only you. I love you all. I'm on Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus here. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video now, people. With Maranatha, the Lord is coming. And it's saying here, uh, parallel disappointments. Parallel disappointments. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, read, uh, mute this out. And I will let you guys go for the day. All right. Thank you guys for watching and listening. So let me go ahead and get this out, mute it out. January 8th, Parallel Disappointments. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. James 5.11 Not infrequently the minds of the people and even of God's servants are so blinded by human opinions through tra traditions and false teaching of men that they are able only partially to grasp the great things which he has revealed in his word. 
Thus it was with the disciples of Christ. Even when the Savior was with them in person, their minds had become imbued with a popular conception of the Messiah as a temporal prince who was to exalt Israel to the throne of the universal empire, and they could not understand the meaning of his words foretelling his sufferings and death. From their very birth their hearts had been set upon the anticipated glory of an earthly empire, and this blinded their understanding. The experience of the disciples who preached the gospel of the kingdom at the first advent of Christ had its counterpart in the experience of those who proclaimed the message of his second advent. Like the first disciples, William Miller and his associates did not themselves fully comprehend the import of the message which they bore. Errors that had been long established in the church prevented them from arriving at a correct interpretation of an important point in the prophecy. Therefore, though they proclaimed the message which God had committed to them to be given to the world, yet through a misapprehension of its meaning they suffered disappointment. With these believers, as with the first disciples, that which in the hour of trial seemed dark to their understanding would afterward be made plain. When they should see the end of the Lord, they would know that notwithstanding the trial resulting from their errors, his purposes of love toward them had been steadily fulfilling. When they learn by a blessed experience that he is very pitiful and of tender mercy, that all his paths are mercy and truth unto such as keep his com covenant and his testimonies. Okay. Okay, people. Um, I'm going to let you guys go. Um, I really want to thank you guys. Uh, please keep prayers over the nation. Please keep prayers over the nation. Please prayers over the world. Uh, just a lot going on right now. We need to be reading our Bibles, reading our Word, uh, reading the God's Word, and really getting closer to Him than ever before. So urgently important now, people. So I want to thank you guys for all the offerings to help the homeless, the orphans, the widows, and those in need in mission fields. May Yeshua, Yahuwah, richly bless each and every one of you. Send offerings to marner.campbell at gmail.com at PayPal or mail in your donations to fill my cup ministries, post office box 414, Canyon City, Colorado 81215. I really want to thank you guys for watching today. Uh, I, you know, I was just listening to what Jonathan said about Farrakhan, and I remember when Farrakhan uh, was, a, he said he was a born-again Christian now, and then he swing back to Islam, and so I don't know, maybe that's why they want prayers for him. Uh, because uh, I know this person, Mello, Pastor Mello, is a born-again anointed servant of God, so maybe they're praying for him for a reason. So if you want to take part in that, you can. But I'm asking that you pray for the nation, pray for America, pray for the world, pray for the people in your neighborhood, pray for your families right now, because we're going to have a lot of things happening, a lot of things going to be going on as we celebrate these Passover feasts. As we know this weekend, they're having a Jewish feast uh, over in Israel. They're doing the Jewish feast, uh, day feast on the uh, weekend here, the 8th, eighth, the eighth, I think, 8th sunset into the 9th. So uh, I'm watching for things myself. I'm praying and watching. So I'm hoping you guys are praying and watching. So Father, be with us as we continue to watch and pray and know that we are in the end at the end. We know that these things are all in our face right now, the judgments on the land. We ask that your Holy Spirit come and be with every man, woman, boy, girl, every man, woman, boy, girl in the prayer box, Father. We ask that you supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory, whether it's physical, mentally, spiritually. Uh, we just thank you for your love for us, your care for us. Uh, we ask that you please, Father, uh, uh, we rebuke this coronavirus. We ask that you allow it to disappear. Uh, but we know we have to come to you. We know the reason is these things are happening is because we have rejected you. We have disowned you. We have thrown you away, Father. We just ask that the people return to you today. Return to you. Return to you. All nations return to you. Return to you. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you so much for your love for us, your care for us. We bind Satan. I bind Satan and all these evil angels Below, beyond, beneath, mentioned and unmentioned, known and unknown. I bind all evil spirits on assignment against us in every way. We ask for your Holy, Holy Spirit to come and cover your people, your latter rain to fall. Uh, we know it's time, Father, for us to have a power that we have never even can imagine. You say your spirit's going to pour out on all flesh as Joel 
talk about. And so we just asking that we prepare our hearts and prepare our souls to receive it. Because a lot of people will, when it fall on the people, they will not receive it. Some people are still going to reject you just the same, Father. Have mercy on our souls. Hallelujah. Help us to repent. Help us to awaken, my God. Help us to awaken. So we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your love for us, your care for us, as I'm always saying. So we're going to say just shalom, shalom, and I'll be back with another video, people. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it so much. Uh, please uh, share this video. As you know, I'm not one of these big ministries out there, but I'm just here a watchman. Uh, trying to awaken people in the world and know that you are coming soon. Messiah is coming soon. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on another video. Shalom, shalom. I love you guys so much. Shalom, shalom. This video is an hour and 14 minutes. Thank you so much for watching. Shalom, shalom. And more news is in the description box. More news is in the description box, as always. Shalom, shalom. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Have a wonderful Monday.